Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Uh, today is the other Wednesday, which makes today Hidden Figures Day. And today's Hidden Figure is Mary Fields, who is also known as Stagecoach Mary and Black Mary, who was the first African-American woman star root mail carrier in the United States. She was not an employee of the United States. Fields obtained the Star Root contract for the delivery of U.S. mail from Cascade, Montana to St. Peter's Mission in 1885. She drove the route with horse and wagon, not a stagecoach, for two four-year contracts from 1885 to 1889 and from 1889 to 1893. Excuse me. Uh, and I'm just going to read you guys a little cute blurb. Bandits beware. In 1890s Montana, would-be thieves didn't stand a chance against Stagecoach Mary because people used to, like, rob the mail carriers. The hard-drinking, quick-shooting mail carrier sported two guns, men's clothing, and a bad attitude. As the first African-American woman to carry mail, she stood out on the trail and became a Wild West legend. Rumor had it that she'd fended off an angry pack of wolves with her rifle, had the temperament of a grizzly bear, and was not above a gunfight. Now, Mary Fields is a real person. She's a historical figure, but the idea of Stagecoach Mary out in the West has also evolved into mythology and folklore over time. Born a slave in Hickman County, Tennessee, circa 1832, Fields was freed when slavery was outlawed in the United States in 1865. She then worked in the home of Judge Edmund Dunn. When Dunn's wife, Josephine, died in 1883 in San Antonio, Florida, Fields took the family's five children to her aunt, to their aunt, excuse me, Mother Mary Amadeus, the mother superior of a convent in Toledo, Ohio. The religious community, which still exists today, was serene and disciplined. There, Fields worked as a groundskeeper. Her gruff style and penchant for cursing raised eyebrows in the quiet convent. When asked how her journey to Toledo was, she reportedly told one of the nuns that she was ready for a good cigar and a drink, which is a direct quote. Historical records showed that the nuns complained about her volatile temper and her difficult nature. According to historian D. Garceau Hagen, one nun remembered Fields' wrath when anyone disturbed her lovingly kept grounds, saying God help anyone who walked on the lawn after Mary had cut it. Fields also tussled with the nuns over her wages, behavior that would have shocked white women who expected African Americans to be well-behaved and subservient. In 1884, Mother Amadeus was sent to Montana to establish a school for Blackfeet Native American girls at St. Peter's Mission. Learning that Amadeus was stricken with pneumonia, Fields hurried to Montana to nurse her back to health. The West suited Fields, Amadeus recovered, and Fields stayed at and began working for her new convent near Cascade, Montana. At the new convent, Fields hauled freight, did laundry, grew vegetables, tended chickens, repaired buildings, and eventually became the forewoman. But though she faithfully served the nuns in the harsh, sparsely populated community, news of her subversive behavior reached the bishop, who raised serious concerns about Fields' habits of smoking, drinking, shooting guns, and wearing men's clothing. When Fields and the convent's male janitor pointed guns at one another during an argument, it was the final straw. The Native Americans called Fields White Crow because she acts like a white woman but has black skin, as in she acts out. Local whites did not know what to make of her. One schoolgirl wrote an essay saying she drinks whiskey and she swears and she's a Republican, which makes her a low, foul creature. Now, remember back then that the Republican and the Democrat parties were switched. So that means that her being a Republican would have made her more of what we would consider today to be a liberal. In 1894, after several complaints and the incident with the disgruntled male subordinate that involved gunplay, the bishop ordered her to leave the convent. Kicked out, Fields was on her own and she set about living a life that was shocking by 19th century standards. She took in laundry and did odd jobs and started businesses and became known for liking hard liquor and gunfights. Mother Amadeus helped her open a restaurant in nearby Cascade, Montana. Fields would serve food to anyone whether they could pay or not and the restaurant went broke in about 10 months. In 1895, although approximately 60 years old, Fields was hired as a mail carrier because she was the fastest applicant to hitch a team of six horses. This made her the second woman and first African-American woman to work for the U.S. Postal Service. As a star carrier, her job was to protect the mail on her route from thieves and bandits and to deliver mail. She drove the route with horses and a mule named Moses. 
She never missed a day, and her reliability earned her the nickname Stagecoach. If the snow was too deep for her horses, Fields delivered the mail on snowshoes, carrying the sacks on her shoulders. Stagecoach Mary, or Black Mary, as she was nicknamed, carried a rifle and a revolver. She met trains with mail, then drove her stagecoach over rocky, rough roads and through snow and inclement weather. And though she intimidated would-be thieves with her height and her tough demeanor, she became beloved by locals who praised her generosity and her kindness to children. For eight years, Fields protected and delivered the mail. She was a respected public figure in Cascade, and the town closed its schools to celebrate her birthday each year. When Montana passed a law forbidding women to enter saloons, the mayor of Cascade granted her an exemption. In 1903, at the age of 71, Fields retired from Star Route Mail Carrier Service. She continued to babysit many Cascade children and owned and operated a laundry service from her home. When she died on December 5, 1914, her funeral was one of the largest the town had ever seen. She died in Columbus Hospital in Great Falls, but she was buried outside Cascade. Stagecoach Mary, or Mary Fields, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. As always, there will be tons of links and information in the description box. Food for thought as always, hope you guys are having a really great week. I really enjoyed doing this one. I think this is a really cool story. Where is the movie, right? Fan cast who y'all would want to be in it. See you guys next time. Peace.